Okay guys, this is mixing salt water the fast and easy way. I am your broke ass reefer. Let's get her done. Alright, I have my RODI water already set up here. I've already siphoned off all the fresh water I'm going to need for topping off my tanks. Uh, eventually, when I finish the water mixing station behind the 75, I will have automatic top offs. I don't have that quite yet, because I'm broke. One thing at a time, let's do some salt water. Now, I have a couple pumps here. Uh, this was a backup pump from the 75. Save all your old pumps. Uh, this one going in here was, uh, was my second pump on the 90. I like to get two of them going. And guys, of course, you can always scale this down. You can... You can take a five gallon bucket and a little pump like this that I've got circulating here in my refugium. I think I paid eight dollars from for that on Amazon and in a five gallon bucket I was mixing about three cups per to get to 1.026 salinity is what we're looking for. You can either check it on your hydrometer or I prefer the refractometer, you just put a few drops in on there, close the lid, look at it into the light, and it gives you your reading. It's wonderful. Where did you get that? It was a gift from my beloved wife. Always keep tools around, always have a pair of scissors, knives, various other things as we're working through our project. Now, I use the 50 pound bags of the uh, Instant Ocean Reef Crystals because it's cheap and I am broke. It does leave a little bit of residue in the bottom of the container, but once I empty it out, just a quick wipe with, uh, with a couple paper towels and it's good to go to refill back up with fresh. So now that I've got these two pumps in here, it's got, it's got a boiling, basically. And you just, you always want to add the salt to your water. I like to shake it out good, kind of spread it out. And it's safe, you're doing it in a bucket, even if you didn't have a pump. Just get your hand in and really mix it around. And again, this is what's great about having pond liner, is we don't mind the little spills. And when I got this kind of circulation going on this, I can, you can let it go pretty fast. It dissolves pretty well. This one here is I have a you notice I have a little float switch here because I have flooded my house before because <laughs> I'm an idiot. But ten dollars and that stops me at 48 gallons, which is perfect for the 50 gallon. It's supposed to be for 50, and at 48, it gets me right to the 0.026 or that I'm looking for. run it in here and usually what I like to do is after I get about halfway through the bag I will stop and just let it mix up for about half an hour or so usually it's pretty well clear by the time we come back so through the magic of time-lapse and uh, trick photography here we are it's 30 minutes later it's looking pretty clear we're gonna dump the other half of the bag in Mixing it slowly into our mixture. That kind of run down a little bit. And you'll get a lot of different opinions on how long you should let your salt sit and mix before you use it. On my Fowler tanks, my fish onlys, I will, uh, as soon as it goes clear, in an hour or so, I, I'll feel good using it in there. Uh, on my 75 reef, and obviously when I finish off the rest of my 18 feet of reefer madness here, I like to let it sit a good 24 hours, just get nice and mixed up, make sure it's stable. Uh, people in colder climates might need heaters to get their 
water up to temperature. Down here in Florida, we have the AC go running all the time, and the house stays a nice 72 degrees. So unless I'm doing a dramatic water change, you know, I keep my tanks at 78, so we will be good. All right, so we just get that all in there. We let it mix up. I put the lid back on so we don't get any dust or cat or dog hair in there. And then, uh, depending on which tank I'm doing, within uh, 3 to 24 hours, I'm ready for water changes. All right.